Alright, welcome to part two of this any percent current patch guide. Uh, now we, we, we got to the first part of the video and I showed up from 1 1 all the way to Free Insight Freak. So now we're going to go into the next segment of that, which is Adjudicator. So, first thing we're gonna do before we actually get there is we should have next to Bind here, so you're gonna have no souls, but that's not a problem. We're going to get Soul Ray with the Doll Soul. The full side of soul. So we're gonna get that. And then we're gonna equip everything because we don't really need any of these anymore. And just equip Soul Ray. And then we're gonna go. Two, four, one. Alright, so I'm actually just take a moment to show a lot of different ways to get through here. Where I can happen to. And how to react to all the things, so... I'm mostly going to just show how to do without killing any enemies. If you need to kill some of these, you can definitely just, like, soul ray the first one or something, and, or second even. You can do whatever you like to here for your safety, but I'll show how I generally run through them. So, what you don't like to do is run at the first one. And then strafe to the right, so he kind of gets stuck over here. Then regen stamina until we get to this rock. Get to this one. Kind of do the same kind of bait to the left and then go to the right. Then when I get to this one, I start kind of rolling because these are definitely a lot more to deal with. And then I get to this fog, generally. So that was actually fairly clean. I didn't take much damage there. But I'll, I'll go through here a couple times to just show what can definitely go wrong and go right and such. Okay, so that's something that can definitely go wrong. If, if you definitely get to that point where you're taking a lot of damage and stuff, and, and just be careful not to be too low. I want to say if you're too low, I would recommend just hitting start. And to abuse a trick where you, if you are in the main menu and you hear a character scream, you can actually just hit save game and then quit out. So if you hear a character scream, your character actually won't die immediately. And in this game in particular, for whatever reason, you, if you stay in the menu, you actually won't take that death, so you can actually quit out and you revive full HP. Another review you can do is something what I just did there, where you, if you go through the fog gate, you can just kind of quit out there so the enemies will leave you alone if you're low health. But let's see if I can actually show that happening. Let's see how this one goes. I guess my uh, my padding is actually pretty good because I'm definitely getting these to behave quite well. But uh, hey, if anything, maybe you can learn this pathing and then see if you can replicate it well enough. Okay, it looks like I'm definitely being a little bit uh, too good, I guess, in this segment. So I'm just going to go a little bit more risky and just uh, kind of go in a straight line or whatever and not dodge much. So just keep an eye on my health right now and then seeing wh when I'm kind of... Uh, so, here. You heard, them, you heard my character do a little scream there. So I did die right there. But as you can see, now that I loaded back in, I'm at full health. So honestly, if you master being able to do that, you can probably get through here like just every single time you do this level. Okay, let me just do it on purpose one more time. Actually, I would like to get bleed. That'd be nice to have so I can show something, but let's see. If I have a bleed, I'm going to show you. Yeah, okay, cool. So, if you go here with no health, or no damage, rather, th that's pretty good. And you can set up Clever Rattering later, because we're going to need it. But having bleed is also pretty good, because it's going to stop 
around just short of having clever rat ring, I think. But uh, with some foul damage, you should be able to get it. Next, so. All right, so right here I'm past the fog gate, and I will just prove by not healing at all that the bleed is fine. I, rec I would recommend just running here and going to the left immediately. That should get you through the thingies. Be careful, this guy. He usually does jump attack, but he can definitely be dick, like right there. That one. So I'll just keep an eye on that. These are soul remains, which if you are a little bit not confident in some of the later segments, I will recommend getting those, and you can do them later. You can use them later for some stuff. Okay, so I am now a clever at in range, and you can see my bleed just stop. So you actually do get exactly color at from bleed. It's pretty cool. He says the HSP, which is just base still. Alright, so there's one little last obstacle before you're mostly safe until the boss, and that's that one skeleton. If you're potentially really close to Clever Rat, he can definitely be a pain. So what I definitely recommend doing is something like this. Just blocking him and then just rolling him after. You can definitely kind of like strafe him. Uh, but I personally haven't mastered that too well on the remake yet. Like, I used to be a better in the OG. Where I'll do something like. So I go back. I will go like here and then just kind of like this and then just kind of go around. Like I'll bait him to the left and then go around him to the right. I can sometimes get it, sometimes I don't. And and he on rare occasion does kill me, unfortunately. So let me kill this guy. Okay, or not. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, usually it's not a problem. What the other thing you can do is definitely just soar him. With, if you're in clever out of range, that should one-shot him. So if you're not confident in it, just do that. And yeah. Alright, so this skip is very well known. I'm sure you know about it. Like, if you're at all interested in speedrunning, you probably have seen it being done once or twice. Oh, dear god. He's at the bottom, isn't he? Where is it? Oh, I don't know skeletons. Um... Okay, so I just don't not trust them while I'm trying to explain something. I hope there's not another that can mess with me. Anyway, um, so yeah, you probably know this skip already. Basically, just standing right here at the corner and then aiming around here is how you get it. And it'd definitely be a little wonky for some people, like you usually mess it up once, but if you have trouble, just go here and aim for like this little side of it. If you go too far to right, it's definitely gonna like block you. Oh, not even that. So even so even that sometimes doesn't work. Oh god, he was right there. So yeah, I mean usually that's what I do. I just go here and then kind of aim to the left a little bit more at an angle. And I usually do it while running too, so it's just like Oop. And yeah, you're here. And I usually roll twice, I roll again. Or I, or I can go jump down here, because I actually personally get this regenerating myself. Yeah, so I mean I'm sure you know that I skip. It's basically just parkour over something. And generally when I'm like up here, I like to just kind of slide down. So if you go from here, you, you're going to fall. And it's not going to have momentum, so. So from the item here, just kind of like go to right running and you should slide down. That's a little faster optimized. And then speaking of optimizing, one little thing that I found is that if you run like a little in the little edge here kind of like this you won't have a fall animation here either so usually or wow even, even well sometimes if you just go like here you'll sometimes fall but i generally like if you run like here you have a cool little like you know you're not stopping you just kind of keep your momentum yeah so there sometimes it does happen but maybe maybe a little bit more to the left than i thought uh. Wasn't great, but anyway, that's just a little optimization I came up with. It's pretty good. Or now that I came up with, I'm sure people do it, but I've noticed it and I'll just have to capitalize it. Um So I'm actually gonna I think there's some heals here. Oh did I pick up some? No. Oh well, I believe there's some heals up here. Yeah, Light Moon, that's perfect. So that's a little pickup you wanna know a backup, but I actually want to get to full HP to demonstrate something here. So if you if you want to be safe about this and have a consistent setup for Clever Rat, if you're at full health here every time, 
what I recommend doing is blocking one arrow here and taking off your shield and taking two more. That should pretty much set you up for clever at every time. If you have a little bit less, so maybe run there, what I have now. What I would recommend is doing... Maybe three blocks with a, with a straight sword. Like that. That should pretty much set you up. So, as you can, sell, I can, as you can see, a full on head will do around 40% of your HP, I want to say. And then I want to say the other ones do around 20, the sword blocks, something like that, roughly. So just depending on your setup, you might want to get used to some different setups. But if you want, you always want to do a consistent one, just fully heal, block one, and take two. Always going to be three shots, obviously. And, yeah. and, if, and if you have like the setup already from the, the bleed or the skellies getting you there, maybe without bleed, but whatever. But you can, you can just kind of skip that and go forth. All right, so I usually go here and I just go straight forward. But this is actually a cool little backup you can have, half moon. So you can pick that up and then go around. Right. So I'm just quit out just so I can have a moment to just talk about this. So Adjudicator. So you are gonna fight in clever out in range. Or you can anyway. Like you don't have to. What you can do is definitely fight it at full HP and just sorry its head. But you may need to fresh spice at least once. If you want to be safe about it. But honestly, as long as you learn how to deal with him and stuff, he should be fine. I think what I'll do here is get him to run half HP and then show you how to dodge the rest, more or less. So you can know the opener. So, here what I'd like to do generally is kind of equip from the dagger to the crescent moon as I walk through the fog gate. Immediately run to the right here, have my wand out, roll right, and then get in like three free shots. And then, depending on where he's looking, I like to get a couple more. And then, as you can see there, as long as I like make sure not to get hit by the. Um, by the, like, after the third attack or something, I can generally just finish him off with the rest. Alright, so I'm going to show you how I dodge all the rest of the attacks now, when he's one hit away. So with the tongue attack, I would recommend kind of, like, if you're in the center, just kind of move to the right, and maybe even roll at the end. You can't really see me roll, but I am rolling. And then for the cleaver, it actually can't track you at all, so as long as you move from the original spot where he starts doing the attack, you should be safe. So, this checking is almost non-existent for that attack, so. so as you can see I'm just doing this. So yeah, I generally just stick to the center. And then if I see him doing that attack, go to the right. And then for the cleaver it can go either way. And then attack there. If he does that attack, I can go there. Yeah, I mean generally just go to the right. Stick to center, go to the right when he does that. And I mean, you can shoot it from over here too, so... It's not that big a deal either. But, as you actually just saw there, like, I... I kind of just have a very, like, cycled fight as is. Okay, okay so just... Let me just grab again how I do this. So, go to the right, have my wand out, do this, roll. Do two shots. And then just kind of try to keep behind him and then just kind of follow his body. So try to stick behind him. So if you see that he's going to turn to the right, just go to the left. If he's going to turn to the left, go to the right. And as long as you like make sure to keep an eye on the next attack that's coming, you can usually just finish him off with very quickly. Um, I would recommend though that you make sure that you are topped off mana wise before you enter the fog, so maybe for the black skeleton as you're setting up HP or something, or before you just get to him, just do that. Uh, back up. Stone of Hermelias right here. You can get that. And then this item right here is a soul, if you need like a couple souls. I don't, I don't know how much it really gives you. Let's just see right now. 2,000? Ooh, that's actually not bad. Wow. Okay, well... I guess so I can like kind of describe... Is this skeleton following me? I thought I heard him. Jesus. Anyway, uh, so usually what I do is, as soon as I land, I shoot my last shot, and I know that it's going to hit, I usually just pop the lead demon soul right there, then drop down, wait for these zords to open, then 
Touch the arch stone, immediately go to a menu, pop my swan soul, and go back to Nexus. So, that's what I do. And then here, you're not going to do much actually, you're just going to uh, find the maiden in black. So she's in the, like, one of the worst spots she can possibly be right now, unfortunately. But... She can be in a couple spots. She can be right next to you. She'll be right here sitting down. That's definitely the most optimal spot. So you got really lucky that happens. She can be over here, which is not too bad because you can actually can't talk to her right away usually. You need to wait like two, three seconds before the game lets you talk to her anyway. So her being here is not too bad either. You might just waste like a second. Uh, she can be here, which is pretty good too. She can be here, which is not great. And then she can be there, which is like the worst spot, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, if, she, if she's like here, actually might not be bad because I mean, as long as you notice her being there, because usually what I do is I check first here, then I check there, then I look here and then I see if she's over there or here. And if she's not in any of these spots, she's over there. So unfortunately, yes, there is made in black RNG in this category <laughs> and in generally in Demon Souls, as long as you're uh, leveling up often. Yes, yeah, so she's over here in the worst spot, but that's fine, since we're just showing things that can happen. So talk to her. Uh, get 13 endurance and 31 magic. So that that um, soul that I popped isn't gonna get you an extra level. So at least for now, you don't need it. Maybe you want to get it later. Feel free. Actually, it might not be bad for a later point in the run, but it might not cover until the next part. This this, this is part two right now. So after part three, no, part four actually, <laughs> I'll cover it. So I'll make sure to remember. But anyway. So yeah, you want 30 endurance and 31 magic. So let me just explain something real quick about magic in this game. In Demon's Souls Remake, at least, I think in, in Demon's Souls Original, maybe it's similar as well there. But as you can see here, going from 27 to 28, there's two points of increase. There's two, two there. There's three here to 30. But if I go past 30 to 31, it only increases one. And actually, if I... Just show you here it also only increases one so my point here is that magic damage past 30 is very minimal so if you want to level magic 30 or 31 is pretty much where you want to cut off for the little while and then later on when you have expert souls you can go further the reason i do 31 instead of 30 is because we are going to get the homing soul arrow spell and that spell gets a fifth orb if you have 31 magic. If you have 30, your damage will technically be capped, but you'll have four orbs instead of five, and that'll definitely cut your your damage by a whole fifth. You know? So, you need 31 magic. And then, I'm basically pumping the rest into endurance, because the other levels you're gonna need are some intelligence and some magic, but you don't need them yet. So, this is basically the best spot to put 13 endurance in, because you're gonna need this for the man eaters run up, because it's a bit of a long one. And then the Valley of Defilement 2, World 2, is really long too, so having this endurance for those two levels is really helpful. And then later on, you know, you have more leeway, but that's basically my logic right now. So, there you go. You, that's, that's what you should get. If you're low on souls for whatever reason, I would prioritize magic over endurance, and there's a still technically kind of a, you know, like, not too necessary, but it's good. If you're doing a PS Plus Warp route, you can right now warp to Upper Latria from this menu right now. I could hit a square right now, it'll take me straight there. Or obviously you can just run up to the Archstone and go to Upper Latria. As you can see, it does take a little bit of time. So obviously the piece of Warp is faster, but if you're doing either of the categories, just do whatever your corresponding thing is. So. Uh, it doesn't really matter as far as, as, far as stats or anything like you're just a nexus but yeah i would recommend having already the fashion equipped now and yeah just having some of these things on all right now uh just just look at my pathing right here this is more or less what i do so i usually go straight here and go to the right of this pot just to get here and then regen stamina here and once it's full i start to regen again and go and then you want to pick up this item right here. Usually my stem is a little more tight, but I usually get it. And then I stick to the left here because there's going to be a gargoyle that blocks me. 
then I regen here. And then, yeah, just follow the inner circle. You know, geometry, the, the smaller circle is the less distance traveled. Or, or the fastest distance traveled, you know. Just follow the inner circle until you get to these pots and you can go a little bit out and close back in. And then, obviously, if you know about this route, you know that we're going to actually be skipping this little leg of this Berserk reference of a prop by using this torch right here. So, uh, you don't need to stand right in front of it, you can stand a little bit around it, but definitely be near it before you quit out. Then you're going to go into cinematic because that is the only method that works. And when we load back in, we're actually going to walk right into the torch. We're going to keep walking. The one with the fire. And then if, if you're going to do skip a little bit slowly and you need to sometimes set up, don't stop immediately. Go into a slow walk and then stop. Because otherwise, the like if you go from walking to stop, you're going to possibly fall off. So I do also have a video for this skip and I would definitely recommend using that if you would prefer to get a more thorough explanation. I'm going to be very brief here. But basically what you want to do is roll from oops, roll from this torch to that one. But you definitely have a little bit of like a leeway to like before you fall off here or you don't cover enough distance. So what I recommend is getting like a 30, like keeping your camera still, like going this way. Move your character to run like 30 degrees to the right. Oh, messed it up, of course. Because of the way I do it generally. Because I let myself fall a little bit before I actually roll, but. Go like that and then roll. So maybe the fact that it didn't stop helped me, but. Maybe you should be stopping yourself. Yeah, so if I'm walking, I usually generally let myself kind of fall on here and then roll. But I do make sure to have my character be like at a 30 degree angle or something. So because if you if you face too much this way, you're going to not cover enough distance in your roll. If you face too much to the left, you're just going to fall off the rail. And by facing, I mean the, the character, not the camera. You can keep your camera facing this way the entire time. And then when you're here, what I recommend is running into the visible wall here, because there is one, and then just sharply turning to like 80 degrees this way or like 70 degrees this way to go there, basically. Can I get myself back here? Ooh, nice. Okay. So, just, so, so if you do like this, like too far up, you're not going to make it. But if you go to the, like that, you'll make it. Uh, that's something I should have explained a little better in my video, actually. So you're going to get a small little uh, better tip. Because I think I was just saying to like kind of wait for the leg to come down. But I don't think that's exactly accurate. Wow, you can climb up this a lot more than I thought you could. Yeah, so again, just instead of going straight up, go a little bit like that. You can you can roll that way too, honestly. Let's see if I can... Oof, okay, so you can also roll that way. Oops. Okay, that was a little scuff, but <laughs> you, you can roll too. But personally, I just found that running to the wall, then just making a quick like turn is pretty consistent. The hardest part is definitely running to the second pillar. And like I said, maybe like uh, how do you must almost, almost say the explanation I did just a little bit better than than my video. But either way, it takes a lot of practice. It took me a long time to really find what was happening wrong, and sometimes I still mess it up, and I don't know why. So this nerd. I just feel like bullying. <laughs> um, anywho, so yeah, uh, that's how you do the hardscape. If you want to have more thorough breakdown, watch that video as well. But I mean, my explanation there, even though brief, was actually not too bad. I feel like, especially the little leg bit. Unfortunately, remaking the video is like, eh, I don't know if I necessarily want to, but it still exists, you know, I guess. All right, so there's two options you have here. I'm actually going to do something real quick. I'm going to quit this. Uh, you got two options for a way to get your mana or your clever rat ring set up up here. I'm going to show you what I do personally since I am showing some of the optimal strats. So, wait, hold on, actually. 
before starting, um, count the torches on the left. So as you can see, there's one there, one there. You can see one up there. You want to count up to five as you run up here. So one, two, have your sword out, out by the way, three, four. And then when you get to close to the five, I usually do a running attack and quit out. And the reason why I do that is because once I load back in here, you're gonna shut out. You're gonna oh, you're gonna shut out by this mind flare, and that sets you up pretty much perfectly for CRR. Um, you do have to actually be walking a little bit towards it. So once you load in, just kind of move your character a little bit that way, so your character is registered as inside the um, inside the. Uh, what do you call it? Like, l just loads in faster, I guess what I'm trying to say. Because, again, your character is also going to be a little bit see-through or invincible whenever you load in. But if you move right away, it actually will uh, register faster. So, to be able to take that hit, as you saw the solar kind of face through me, if you walk towards it, it actually won't. So. Um, yeah, so that's one way to set up HP. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that unless you have seen like my setup for it because it if you relo reload too far up he's definitely going to just be next to you and just paralyze you immediately and just you'll be in like in a constant stun lock basically another method you could do which is a little bit slower but a little, little bit more consistent is uh, or safer is to bait his paralysis attack or maybe just get really close to him and then just kind of get a running start and get hit by the explosion. That should set you up pretty well too. So if you're unaware, the mind flare has three different reactions for every different like oh, different state that he's in. If you're long range, you'll do the soul ray. If you're like in a mid range, wait, where am I gonna be now? Behind him. Okay. If you're like a so right here, it, he'll most likely do the soul ray. So around here, if you're around here and he notices you. <laughs> You probably do the process. Yeah. And then kind of run at you until you get too close. And then you do explosion. But actually... How do I show this? Here, let me quit it again. But actually, even if he doesn't do any attack, and you're, like, basically hugging him... Like, if he knows you, basically, as you hug him, you will immediately do the explosion. Because remember that this enemy doesn't have any method to melee you. you he's actually like incredibly harmless as long... Because he has poise, mind you. So he's not defenseless, but he's harmless with any melee attacks if you're close. So those are those three options, basically. Yeah, by the way, you can switch back to permits now. <laughs> you only need it to slip into that uh, torch. But yeah, so... That's how you do that. Those are the two setups you can do. Um, depending on what you do for the next fight for Old Monk after Man Eaters, one might be preferable to the other, but I personally do the Solary one because it's a little faster. Even if you quit out. For IGT anyway. Um, so I went to the end of this hallway because there's actually a bunch of h pies here, which is really out of the way. I wouldn't recommend it for like a very speedy run, but if you need some like easy, big uh, mana heals, those are some you can get and just come back. For optimal speedruns, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if you're starting out, you can get them, honestly. I would I would actually highly recommend that. Um anything else? I don't believe so. Nope, I believe that's it. So I, I so the whenever I like to do the Put on the performance mode back on is to this fall gate. So as soon as I cross, I just go to the settings. But yeah, we're going to do man eaters now. I do actually have a video on how to do this fight as well. Um, I, I think it, like, it might not be the most up to date video, but I think I cover a lot of the general idea of this fight well enough. But I will try to kind of show how I usually do the opener for this fight at the very least. So, all right. So what I do again, like I said, I just go to performance. And then what I do here is I, I take a couple steps until he's like down at the bottom there. And then shoot Soul Ray. Okay, I, I kind of messed up there. Hold on, let me do it again. I didn't went too far. I usually run until he's gonna be at the bottom of the 
of the thing is I think was what I was kind of going for rather. So maybe you're looking for it's the bottom of the bridge. So right here, I usually shoot three, and then I start doing that maneuver that you might have seen where I like walk back and then shoot. We also obviously have to make sure to not. Oh god. Okay. Let me start that again. Um, I guess I'll, I can. I guess after already showing that, I can describe what's happening with that. So basically, the idea of the little sorry attacks is that you are creating distance, but still punishing him by doing some damage. So the walk back and then turn around is an attempt at creating a little bit of distance, but still attacking him as you do so. So not calling anyone out per se or attacking them because I get it. Like it's starting out the game and stuff and learning. I've seen some people do something like this. This kind of create a semicircle, which defeats the purpose of this strategy. Because you're basically not covering any ground to travel. You basically want to turn out the, the like the last minute. That's what I'm getting at. So And that actually also help with like the explosion attack because if you know about the little like green explosion attack that he does, if you're on the same ground as he is. Uh, at least if he's decently far away enough. If he's right in front of you, he might hit you anyway, but... If you're... If he does the explosion attack and say he's, like... Where this pot is... And I'm, like, right here... If he does the explosion attack... And I stand still, he actually can't hit me. At all. Uh, it might be because he backsteps, actually, I'll think about it. But either way, it doesn't hit you at all. And I'll definitely try to demonstrate it during the fight, at least, at some point. But if you do that circle attack, you might be a little bit further than he normally... Than you normally are, so you might hate you doing that. So that's one downside of doing that, and not to mention you don't get the advantage of doing the uh, backstep attack I'm mentioning. So, yeah, so something like this. That's what I'm saying. Not, not, not like this. Like this. Let's turn back around. Like it's possible to like just like it's possible that you're gonna do a spell cancel. Like sometimes if you turn too sharply, it'll happen. But that's why you kind of do like like in a circle. Like you like turn back around, you don't go You don't you don't turn your your character back immediately forward. You like finesse them back to the to forward or them. Like that. Not like this. I wish I had a gamepad right now. Maybe I'll I'll have a little editing thing in the front so you can see. Oh I forgot I had these. Nice. That should come handy real quick to these demonstrations, but um I guess, yeah, let, let me see if I can show you a little more scripted fight. That was a little bit weird because of he dived at me. Generally speaking, you can get him either all your mana all the way down before he dives at you or anything. But sometimes he will react before he does that. So just to keep an eye on him, just like wait for him to do the first move. If he just starts, like after you hit him, he'll usually stagger a little bit. Sometimes not, he would just immediately dive, but definitely don't do anything too quickly. If you see that he starts walking at you again, if he's decently far away, that means you're safe to cast another one with time. But if he's really close, maybe hold off a little bit until you you see him actually do something and react. So, let's try again. So, three. Then walking, so I attack. Walking, so I attack. Stagger, long stagger, so I attack again. Long stagger, so that I can. And then I would recommend using one H spice here. And then switch to fresh spice. So right there you can definitely roll. Oops. And from there he's kind of being a dumbass, so I just gotta hit him again. And yeah, so that's it. Uh I would recommend once you trigger the second one, definitely try to finish him off as fast as possible, but don't get too greedy. You do have like I wanna say five to seven seconds before the second one comes. But if you're able to finish him off quickly. I would recommend you're in the left or like the the more centered half of the bridge because if you're in the in the closer to the fog gate half Manus is going to go to this pillar and get stuck because uh, in, in the remake I, I think these pillars are a little bit more tight and they probably added one that didn't need to be there so when he tries to fly into like to the bridge he actually won't land because he gets stuck in a bridge and then he You'll be outside and then like dash, but you won't get. Ugh, it's a mess. Maybe I'll show it again soon, but 
I would recommend being over here because he will land around here. And I can actually have enough time to prep one spell cast to hit him as he gets them. And I can do the same thing, but just from a little bit shorter distance. And then just keep an eye on your man, obviously. That attack is good punish. If you have space, I would recommend going back. Oof. Those are close. That's a good punish too. If he, if he starts a backpedal, he's more likely gonna dash. Or, yeah, dash. So just keep an eye on that. Yeah, okay, now I'm gonna show you just how to dodge all things, so. Oh. So, okay, so actually, if you were to do a spell now, it'll actually do more damage. It, it does around 364. If you see the tail hit, the tail, like, grab the head, that means you're gonna do, like, a counter hit, which is nice to take advantage of. But I'll first recommend you do, like, a fresh spice if you're a little bit low on mana, actually. Because that's a good opening to do so. Um, I guess let me show you that fight. One more time. Um, what did I say I was going to show you? Maybe? I don't remember. <laughs> I forgot. Damn it. I only said like five minutes ago. Or not even like 30 seconds ago. Oh wait. I was going to show you the flying. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show you how the second one comes in if you're closer to the claw gate. If you stand still, that's also another good one to punish. The nature spice, like I said. Keep an eye on that. He's really close there, so I didn't want to like Stay stand still. <laughs> nice. Okay, so this is what happens if you are closer to the fog gate. Because he's gonna land on that and he's gonna try to dash, but he's still outside the room, so he's just gonna walk off. And it's like a nightmare. If this does happen to you, like unintentionally, what I would recommend is actually going to the top of the bridge. And just kind of like using your fresh spice to get ready for him to land because he'll definitely follow you up here and you can kind of do the same thing with the second one from the top now yeah. as the first a little while and i haven't shown this yet but tail cuts are good gives you a couple times to hit him or do another magic attack and the crescent fashion is actually good damage too so i would actually recommend that using that if he's close to you but not um not with, uh, out of mana. Okay, so you did kind of see that the green attack didn't really hit me. Let me see if I can show that again a little bit better. Oh, I didn't expect them to do that, Jesus. Not sure how to bait the attack. Maybe there? Hmm. How to bait it without really hitting him? The magic explosion. Maybe from there, just far away? No? No, oh, there. Oh. Do it already. Okay, that actually did hit me. So, okay, like I said, if you if you are close to the boss, it, it will actually hit you. I, I thought that might be fine, but no, that's actually too close still. So, rip my point. <laughs> that's okay though. You can you can see my point in that sense though, for sure. Uh, yeah, let's back in. And I guess I can show you another fight though. Um, I should have my uh, resources back, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I mean... So, one thing I guess I haven't mentioned yet... Uh, that was a bad opening, I don't know why I did that, but... I guess one thing I haven't mentioned is that you do kind of frame this spell. What I did in my... Actually, here, let me show you the counter attack. So, 384 is what you do instead of 274. And then you cut the tail, I like to do that to uh, get some free hits in. Like that, and you see behind them. But be careful, do try to make sure you have the stamina still. Oh, 
Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of freeing this attack. As long as you, he, your camera's kind of centered, you should be able to do it. Like, it'll take some practice to get these uh, snipes in without locking on. And you can still lock on sometimes, but I personally just prefer to freeze at this point. I'm just gonna use all twice that with so many, but. Hey, do the explosion attack now. Maybe he'll do it after this buff or something. Since you're in Clever Rat, this is. Like, it doesn't matter really, buffs, honestly. You already get one shot by anything. And, like. You can fight it without. You know, okay, so here, here's what I'll just suggest. Oh, I, I don't really believe saw the whole animation in a while, but. If you, um. If you do want to fight at full health, I would recommend getting those, uh. Old Spice that I mentioned earlier. That way we can have more mana overall. Because it will take a lot longer to kill him, but I guess it's safer. Can you do that attack from farther away, please? Like there? No? Learn how to dodge those attacks. Like, some people, like, as soon as they see a melee attack, they'll immediately dodge if they're close to them and try to get past them, but... I mean, I guess you can see there that I think hit by that. You know, it looks like it did. Oh, God. Let's see from the top. I do show it in my video, by the way, the man eaters thing, so I guess if you want to see it, like, no matter what, the explosion just not touching me. I think I showed it twice that it in a row. That's close. Do it again, nerd. Alright, one more try. You get one more try to show me. Anyway, I tried, but that's, that's fine. Alrighty, so, uh, yeah, so that item, I usually don't pick it up anyway f these days for optimizing, but there's a full moon grass you can grab. That's pretty nice for, like, just a good, good chunk of the game. You can just put it on here, I like, guess, your main one. I'm not going to, because I, I just don't use it, but... Yeah, so that's that's a cool little thing you can do. Um, yeah, again, you can see the fight to see some of the just general things you can have happen and how to react to them. Uh, but yeah, um, these items are some soul items. Uh, if you are low on souls or just like a couple more for leveling or something, you can pick this up. I usually don't, honestly. Usually just pick up these, the max steam and soul first levels, and then pop them later, but not quite yet. So, um, so one thing I would recommend, especially starting out, because this is actually an easier way to do the fight. It's possible that not doing this is faster if you get good old monk RNG, but... It's so rare to get good old monk RNG that I just find this to be better. So, if you haven't died at all in Latria, if you have died in Latria actually, like once for pure fantasy reasons, you should just keep going with your clever rat. But if you haven't, and if you know if you reload, you're gonna get pure white, you should. And yeah, you can see now that I'm pure white. Uh, now you want to take off your top two armor pieces and then fall to your death because if you didn't know in pure white tendency you actually have more damage in soul form i think especially uh magic damage but i think it works for all of them so the run up to old monk and old monk himself should be go a lot faster with both pure white and soul form unfortunately you don't have sharpness ring because i would make that even faster you'd, you'd potentially be able to five shot old monk but not with this. I think you do six or seven shot at this point. Uh, but yeah, so play every souls. Make sure to do that. You do need them. And then I usually just roll into this cutscene here. And what I like to do is just run at the first centipede and take one hit. It would almost always... I think just by running or something, you kind of just bait it to do that first like tail attack. So it'll almost always do that. If it's going to attack anyway. Sometimes it will... Just not attack for a moment. If that happens, you can just like kill them. Kill both of these and go to the next one to try again. Because you don't want to wait. Sometimes they'll just stand there like idiots for like 5 to 10 seconds. So if, if I see it takes 2 seconds for them to attack, I'll just kill them both. 
Yeah, so running counter hit with a tail attack. I, I've yet to see the jumping attack with the with this running thing that I do, so I think it might be a soft AI manipulation. Wherever you're running, it might just default to that attack. Uh, I think he still he might do the acid attack, but if he does, just hit him. Because you got a lot of these to try now, so you, now you got this one. But if you're in CRR by this point, you can just do a running attack. You should one-shot them with a pure white tendency. So yeah, there's four of those, two are together, two are separate, and then up here there is a soul uh, mind flare. I usually wait for them to do that attack and hit and kind of have the left and backtrack a little bit so he will uh, hit the thing, the wall with the paralysis, and then do two soul rays and then two R ones. Um, if you need some extra fresh spice, these drop that, or actually they all drop H spice as well. So if you feel like you're low, or you want more, just get those. Um, I usually skip them at this point because I don't need them, but yeah, there's that. Uh, and then right here is going to be two back-to-back -back centipedes. But because you're on CR already, you can actually do this. Just kind of like stay a little bit far away, but once they're both in view, lock on to the one in the back, I want to say, and then just snipe them like that. Uh, if they start moving, you might miss, but it, it should work out, actually. Alright, now it's going to be a little bit shaky, but... Uh, trust me, it should work well as long as you, uh, as long as this mind flare gives you Garanji. So you got one last mind flare at the top. So what I like to do is run up to him and just kind of wait for him to do that. Or he can paralyze me. Great. Okay. Maybe I hesitate too much there. Really, here sucks because you do get spawned at the very bottom of the tower. So if anything goes wrong in this run up you're going to lose a lot of time unfortunately and it's probably reset if you're optimizing like i generally was <laughs> all right so we're almost there once you hear the like that that sound you're pretty close yeah so do that and then i like to do a running attack from the Let's try that again passes attack once he does it, running attack from the left, and then hit him like that. And then walk into the fog gate. And I usually fresh spice. Like once I get through the fo Whoa, you actually cover a long distance, I thought. Um, so you're going to see in a moment once I pause here that this fresh spice that I do actually kind of manipulates him. And he is going to start walking between these two chairs. Is what I found after I started doing that. Uh, other, otherwise, what you could do, if you don't want to do this, you can actually, like, get past the Mind Flare. Oh, I guess I can go through the Fog. Um, you can go past the Mind Flare, and then right at the Fog Gate, like, just pop Fresh Bites real quick, and then walk through the Fog. If the Mind Flare does, like, Explosion Attack, it shouldn't touch you at all, so you can do that. But I recently found that if you do this, you'll go over here. That's a pretty good manipulation to get him to usually get at least two hits in, or maybe more. Because if you don't know, the idea here is that you want to bait Old Monk into chairs. And you want to have him kind of hit him. And sometimes he won't break them. Like, he he will maybe... If he's a little bit forward here, like around here. He might try to hit this chair. But he might miss. And if he does that, that's like perfect. You want to you wanna hit him as much as you can from there. So maybe hit him a little bit to the right. So you don't you don't break the chair. See, let's see if I can get that to happen, actually. Oh my god. Okay, not quite. Ah, so I'm just gonna see if I can get him stuck in a chair. Oh, no. oh! Oh, okay. Call me, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the chair thing is the, the way you want to do it, basically. So, you can usually get like two or three shots in before he does any homing soul masses or homing soul arrow. Do keep an eye on those because the soul ray particle effect that you do on him is blue. The soul the soul arrows might like the him his homing soul arrows might blend in with his uh with his particle effects from the damage. So just keep a very close eye on him. Unfortunately, they, they were yellow in the original, so they changed that to blue. And just for that reason alone, it, it's I, I kind of don't like the change, but eh, whatever. 
Um, do also be careful. You will sometimes soul ray him, and he will toggle escape the hit. So that means that he won't take, like he will take damage, but he will like not take a stagger. And usually he toggle escapes the wand, so he will immediately just go into a soul ray. So if you are already casting, you're screwed, pretty much. Most likely, unless if he somehow like derps and shoots sideways, you're you're pretty much screwed. So that happens, what you want to do is uh, quit out, basically, as fast as you can. That way, like, if you quit out before it hits you, you're going to keep Clever at range. You'll still be at the very bottom of this level, unfortunately, but you'll be in Clever at. If you are able to get to the menu, uh, you will probably die, but you will at least not have to run up to the enemies again. Although... If you already kill these centipedes, you're not going to be able to set up CR again, so maybe it's best to just take the death at that point, too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, it's really tough. Like, even though this is a short segment, it can be a, re a real pain in the butt for optimization whenever you anything goes wrong, basically. I did not notice those green lights in the bell. That's cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's, that's something to draw. Like, if I, hopefully, I can show it happening at least. But Oh, shit. The, the chairs. Okay, well, I mean, you can see that he still ran to the left there. Sometimes you can bait and hit you if he's just really close. Which is not a bad idea as well, but... I would recommend that only for the last hit, pretty much. So, yeah, use chairs for pretty much all the hits. And then... So... Right now, he's one hit away from death. So all I would have to do really to kill him is hit him with my sword. Even just like one handed like I am now. And maybe right now it would be worth it to do that because... Like, th th these chairs are really far away and there's so many little of them. But if you are near a, 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 a chair, I would recommend killing him with another soul ray as well. Or actually, well, actually, because I'm low on mana, I can't really show this, but basically magic damage makes his death animation faster. That's what I was trying to say. And that means that the arch will reload faster so you can touch it faster and get the hell out faster, you know? Uh, the same happens with a backstab, which maybe I'll show both in a moment so I can just display what happens, but I would recommend doing that as opposed to just a normal hit. Actually, here. I'll just let's play normal hit. Oops. As you can see, the death is really slow right now. Like, honestly, if I had hit him with the magic or anything, he would have already been down. But yeah, like, if any any fellow speedrunners... But I, I imagine some, maybe, of the other folks, like... Doing the speedrun and optimizing for a world record and stuff. Like, if you're watching this, that's, that's something to know. Like, I don't think that's something that a lot of people ask me. So I don't always mention it if I notice it, but like, it's an optimization for sure. Um, yeah, let's see if I can show that again with... Um, oh, chairs are going to be out, rather. Maybe next attempt that I show here, I should uh, do... With a reload of like overall the level. Yeah, I mean he pulled out sorry right there, so he, he didn't do a toggle skip this time, but it shows. Why did he go towards the chair? That's really weird. <laughs> um, you can you can hit him with melee attack if you want to if you're low on mana to get him low. But I would definitely recommend doing um magic damage for the end. So right here you can do one more, but the reason I'm not showing you is because I want to show you a backstab instead. Oh, God. So you can do something similar, but for the backstab. So I like I like to do something like that. Just bait him to the chair, and then just get a backstab in if I'm low on. Uh... Oh, this is a cool little. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> Wait. I like this shot at least too. Not. Hmm. Cool. 
cool, cool thumbnail material that I can maybe use at some point. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I was like going with this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the, both the magic damage death and backstab damage death are very fast. So you can you can use both of those for getting a quicker death. Now, I'm running out of photo mode because there's something I want to talk about before I actually do it. So, because this is the first arch demon that you kill, because you did kill the demon, and because you're in soul form, you're going to get three or four prompts when you hit the arch stone, which loses a lot of time. You're going to get demon destroyed first, then you're going to get body restored. Oh no, three. I guess three. And then, and then when it tells the arch stone, you get the the thingy thing, but basically it's all going to prevent you from warping away at right away. But, uh, blanks, law blanks found a cool little thing by accident where if you, <laughs> touch the arch stone and immediately press pause, you can actually bypass all of that. So basically that's part of the reason that makes doing the reload thing worth it. So if you couldn't do that, maybe the soul form thing with pure white wouldn't be worth it. But because he can do it, it is worth it to just um, do the soul form thing and then do that. So that's another cool transition some learners may not know about. And it's it's pretty neat. It uh, allows you to just kind of bypass stuff. It, you can use something similar one more time in the run. I'll definitely mention it when you can when you get there. But that's a cool little thing you can do. Um, I don't think you can pause immediately at, at the same time you press X. You just wait like a fraction of a second. But if you're too late, you also may not get it either, which is a little bit of time loss, unfortunately. While I was backstabbing him, what I should have done as I was going through the animation is pop the mixed demon soul at the very least. Like if you have these as well, you can do that too. Just make sure not to pop this if you're back in the nexus. The gold demon soul, please do not pop it. <laughs> that would be terrible. Anyway, so now, uh, with those souls, you should be able to get at least 25 magic. Nope. 25. Or intelligence, rather. 25 intelligence. If you did pop a few more souls, like either the one you found in... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Judicator boss room, or the ones in the back of the room of man eaters, you should be able to get maybe two more levels from here. I, I wouldn't put them in intelligence. I would put maybe in magic. Or if you want, maybe endurance, just whatever you fancy, or maybe health. I don't know, whatever you want. Personally, I'm, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to do the scheduled stuff. Um, but you do want some souls because you are going now to learn homing solero. Oh, you need 500. OK, so just 500. That's not too much. It shouldn't be an issue, but you do need to get cloak as well. And then you're going to I would recommend on equipping Sol Ray and then putting on homing Sol Arrow, Sol Ray, Cloak in that order. That way it should be homing Sol Arrow, Sol Ray, Cloak. Just like that. Now let me just quickly test if maybe... So I think this would be out of... Oh wait, what? Maybe that works too? Wait, let me try it again. So let me see if the games didn't index something. Oh well, maybe that actually works too. I'm not sure about that, unfortunately. I, I don't know, maybe the game index is it weird or something. Okay, no, maybe, maybe it does work like that. Maybe you can just keep Solray and then just equip Homing Solero Cloak. Because this is fucked up right now, so you don't want this. This is garbage. And maybe this, this, this. Yeah, okay, I guess that works. So I guess just don't unequip Solray, but just put on Cloak and then that. Hey guys, Future Berto here. So while doing runs, I actually figured out what was happening here. Essentially, all that's happening is that if you remove a spell from a slot, the other spells that are equipped don't actually move forward, so to speak, in the lineup. If I unequip Flame Toss and put in Soul Ray, it's not going to shuffle Waterville to the first slot. It's actually going to just stay in the second, and Soul Ray is going to come to the first. So because the way I usually do it is that I take off Flame Toss, Waterville, and then equip Soul Ray. And then I go ahead and quick cloak and then homing salt arrow. The order is still correct because it goes from 
Soul Ray to Cloak, but then back to Homie Soul Arrow, which is what you want. You want to have Homie Soul Arrow, Soul Ray, and then Cloak. So it still kind of works in the way it rotates. The spells don't actually move around, their slots actually stay, basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, but anyway, unfortunately for him, you do, like, you know how earlier I said we don't get the sharpness ring? Well, another way to get it is by killing this guy, <laughs> by looting him. So, yeah, you need the sharpness ring, and that's all you really need from him, but you can put it on now as well. And as I'm sure you can guess, uh, this guy isn't too happy about it. He's usually normally sitting down. But he's not really an issue. I usually just like run by him. So that, you do that. And then we're gonna go to Valley of Defilement next. 